My name is Ursus Verli and I would like to talk to you this morning about my project Tidying Up Art. Um, first of all, um, I mean, any questions so far? <laughs> I, I, first of all, I have to say I'm not from around here. I'm from a completely different cultural area, maybe you noticed. I mean, I'm wearing a tie <laughs> first. And um, secondly, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm, I'm speaking a, a in a foreign language now and I want to apologize in advance for any mistakes I might make because I'm from Switzerland. And I just don't hope you think this is Swiss German I'm speaking now here. This is just what it sounds like if we Swiss try to speak American. But uh, don't worry, I don't have troubles with English as such. I mean, it's not my problem, it's your language after all. And, uh, and, and I mean, I, mean I, I am fine. I, after this presentation here at TED, I can simply go back to Switzerland and you have to go on talking like this all the time. So. I've been asked by, by the organizers to read from my book. It's called Tidying Up Art, and it's, as you can see, it's, it's more or less a picture book. So um, the reading would be over very quickly. But um, since I'm here at TED, I, I, I decided to hold my, my talk here in a more uh, modern way, uh, in the spirit of TED here, and I managed to do some, some slides here for you. I'd like to show them around so we can just, um, you know, yeah. Actually, I, I managed to prepare for you some enlarged pictures, even better. So, um, tidying up art, I mean, I have to say, it's, that's a relatively new term. You won't be familiar with it. Uh, I mean, I, it's a hobby of mine that I've been indulging in for the last few years, and it all started out with this uh, picture of the American artist Donald Backler I had hanging at home. I had to look at it every day, and after a while, I just couldn't stand the mess anymore this guy was looking at all day long. Yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of felt sorry for him. And it seemed to me even he felt really bad facing these unorganized red squares day after day. So I decided to give him a little uh, support and brought some order into neatly stacking the blocks on top of each other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I, th I think he looks now less miserable. <laughs> and it, it was great. With this, with this experience, I started to look more closely at modern art. And I realized how, you know, the world of modern art is particularly topsy-turvy. And um, I can just show here a very good example. It's actually a, a simple one, but it's a good one to start with. It's a picture by uh, Paul Klee. And we can see here very clearly, it's, it's a confusion of color. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, the artist... The artist doesn't really seem to know where to put the different colors, the, 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 the various pictures here, of the various elements of the picture. The whole thing is unstructured. We, we don't know, Mr. Mr. Clay was probably in a hurry. I mean, maybe, maybe he had to catch a plane or something. I mean, we, we can see here he started out with orange, and then he already ran out of orange. And, here we can see he decided to take a break for a square. Yeah. And I would like to show you here my uh, tidied up version of this uh, picture. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and we, can, we can see now what was barely recognizable in the original. 17 red and orange squares are juxtaposed uh, with just two green squares. Yeah, uh, yeah that's great. So, um, I mean... <laughs> That's, I mean, that's just tidying up for beginners. I would like to show you here a picture which is a bit more advanced. <laughs> um, what can you say? What a mess. I mean, <laughs> um, you see, everything, everything seems to have been scattered aimlessly around the space. Uh, if my room back home had looked like this, my mother would have grounded me for three days. So um, I'd like to, uh, I wanted to reintroduce some structure into that picture. And, uh, yeah, it's, that's really advanced tidying up. Yeah, so, right. Hey. Yeah, yeah, you're right, sometimes people clap at this point, but that's actually n more in Switzerland. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, we, we Swiss are famous for chocolate and cheese. Uh, our trains run on time. We are only happy when things are in order. But um, to go on, here is a, a very good example to see. This is a picture by um, Juan Miró. And um, yeah, we can see here the artist has drawn a few lines and shapes and dropped them any old way onto a yellow background. And um, yeah, it's the sort of thing you produce when you're doodling on the phone. And um, so, and here's my. Uh, 
you can see now the whole thing takes the whole thing takes up far less space. It's more economical and also more efficient. I mean, with with this method, Mr. Miro could have saved canvas for another picture. So, but I can see in your faces that you're you're still a little bit skeptical. So, um, that, so that you can just appreciate how serious I am about all this, I brought along the patent specifications for some of these works uh, because I've had my working methods patented at the Eidgenössische Amt für Geistiges Eigentum in Bern, Switzerland, and. I'll just quote from the specification. Laut dem Kunstprüfer Dr. Albrecht. It's not finished yet. Um, laut dem Kunstprüfer Dr. Albrecht Götz von Ohlenhusen wird die Verfahrensweise rechtlich geschützt, welche die Kunst durch spezifisch aufgeräumte Regelmäßigkeiten des allgemeinen Formenschatzes neue Wirkungen zu erzielen möglich wird. Yeah, well, I could have translated that, but you would be none the wiser. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I'm not sure myself what it means, but it sounds good anyway. I, I just realized it's important how one introduces new ideas to people. That's why these patents are sometimes uh, necessary. I would like to do a short test with you. Okay? I, everyone is sitting in quite an orderly fashion here this morning. So I would like to ask you all to raise your right hand. Yeah, the right hand is the one we write with, apart from the left-handers. And now. Now, I'll count to three. I mean, it still looks very orderly to me. Now, I'll count to three, and on the count of three, I'd like you all to shake hands with the person behind you. Okay? One, two, three. <laughs> well. Yeah, I'm... You can see now, even, yeah, it's a good example, even behaving in an orderly, systematic way can sometimes lead to complete chaos. So, um... Yeah, but it's, we can also see that very clearly in this next painting. This is a painting f uh, by the artist Niki de saint Fall, And I mean, in the original, it's completely unclear to uh, see what this tangle of colors and, and, and shapes is supposed to depict. But in the, in the tidied up version, it's plain to see that it's a sunburned woman playing volleyball. Um, yeah, it's... Um, but actually, um, the <laughs> yeah, that, this, one, this one here, that, that, that's much better. That's a picture by, by Keith Herring. Um, <laughs> I, I think it doesn't matter. Um, so, I mean, this, this picture has not even got a proper title. It's called Untitled. And, I'm, and I think that's appropriate. Um, <laughs> So, in the tidied up version, yeah. we have a sort of Keith Haring spare part shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, Keith Haring looked at statistically. Yeah. One can see here quite clearly, yeah. Yeah, you can uh, see here we have 25 pale green elements, of which one is in the form of a circle. Or here, for example, we have 27 pink squares, but only one pink curve. I mean, that's interesting. One could extend this sort of statistical analysis to cover all Mr. Herring's various works in order to establish in which period the artist favored pale green circles or pink squares. And, I mean, the artist himself could also benefit from this sort of listing procedure, procedure by using it to estimate how many pots of paint he's likely to need in the future. <sighs> One can obviously also make combinations, for example, with the Keith Haring circles and Kandinsky dots. You can add them to all the squares of Paul Klee. In the end, one has a list with which one then can arrange, then you categorize it, then you file it, put that file in the filing cabinet, put it in your office, and you can make a living doing it. Yeah, from my own experience. So, um... <laughs> So, actually, I mean, here we have some artists that are a bit more structured. It's not too bad. This is Jasper Jones. We can see here he was uh, practicing with his ruler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think it could still benefit from more discipline. And I think the whole thing adds up much better if you do it uh, like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and here, and here that, that's one of my favorites. Tidying up Rene Marguerite, this is really fun. You know, this, um, <laughs> um, this is, uh, I'm always being asked what inspired me to embark on all this. It, it goes back to a time when I was very often staying in hotels. So uh, once I had the opportunity to stay in a, in a ritzy five-star hotel, and you know, there you had this, I uh, had this little sign, I put this little sign outside the outside door every morning that read, uh, please tidy room. I don't know if I have them over here. So, 
actually, my room there hasn't been tidied once daily, but three times a day. So after a while, I decided to have a little fun. And uh, before leaving the room each day, I I'd scatter a few things around the space, you know, <laughs> like, like books, uh, clothes, toothbrushes, etc. And it was great. By the time I returned, everything had always been neatly returned to its place. And, and then one, one um, morning, I hang the, sign, the same little sign onto that picture by Vincent van Gogh. And you have to say, this, this room hadn't been tidied up since AD 88. So, and when I returned, it looked like this. <laughs> Yeah, at least it's now possible to do some vacuuming. Um, okay, I mean, there are always, I can see there are always people that, that uh, like, uh, react in that one or another picture hasn't been properly tidied up. So we can make a, a short test with you. This is a picture by René Magritte, and I'd like you all to uh, inwardly, like in your head, uh, that is, to tidy that up. So it's possible that some of you would, would look, make it like this. Yeah, I, I would actually prefer to do it um, more this way. Some people would make uh, apple pie out of it. And, but it's a very good example to see that the whole uh, work was more of a handicraft endeavor that involved a very time-consuming job of uh, uh, cutting out the various elements and sticking them back in new arrangements. And it's not done, as many people imagine, with the computer. Otherwise, it would look uh, like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, now I've been able to um, tidy up pictures that I wanted to tidy up for a long time. Here, a very good example here, Jackson Pollock, for example. I oh know, it's, it's, it's again. Yeah, that, that's a really hard one. So, um, but after a while, I, I just decided here to go all the way and just put the paint back into the cans. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, or you, you could go into a three-dimensional art. Here we have uh, the fur cup by Merit Oppenheim. Here I just brought it back to its uh, original state. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And it's great, you can, you can even go, you know, or we have this, um, this pointillism movement, for those of you who are like uh, uh, into arts, pointillism movement is that kind of uh, paintings where everything is broken down into dots and pixels. And uh, I, that's, this sort of thing is, is ideal for tidying up. So I once, <laughs> I once applied myself to the work of the inventor of that method, Georges Seurat, and I collected together all his thoughts. And uh, now they're all in here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You, you can count them afterwards if you like. Um, and here, yeah, you see, that's the, that's the wonderful thing about the tidy up art idea. It's new. So there is no existing tradition on it, there is no textbooks. And um, I mean, not, not yet anyway. I mean, <laughs> It's the future we will create. <laughs> so, um, um, but to, to round things up, I would like you to show you just uh, one more. This is the village square by Peter Bruegel. That's how it looks like when you send everyone home. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe you're asking yourselves where all Bruegel's, where all Bruegel's people's we people went. Of course, they're not gone. No, they're, they're all here. Um, yeah. yeah, just pile them up. Um, so, um, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm kind of uh, finished at that moment. And for those who want to see more, I've got my, my book downstairs in the bookshop, so, and I'm happy to sign it for you with, with any name of any artist. <laughs> and, um, but but I, yeah, before leaving, I, I would like to show you, I'm, I'm working right now at, uh, on another, in a related field, with my tidying up art method, I'm working in a related field, and I started to bring up, to bring some order into some flags. And, um, yeah, I, 
Yeah, here, I just, that's my new proposal here for the union check. Um, and then maybe before, before I leave you, um, yeah, I think after you have seen that, I have to leave anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a hard one. So um, I, I really, I couldn't find a, a way to tidy that up properly. So I just decided to make it um, a little bit more uh, simpler. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>